A 40 year old video game was just beaten for the first time and boomers are mad about it. Learn about this story and more in Joe News. What's up gamers, so recently a 13 year old streamer beat the iconic Russian video game Tetris for the first time ever! 13 year old Will Skipson became the first human to ever beat the original Nintendo version of Tetris after he played it to level 157 where the game crashed as it was never programmed to go any further as it was believed to be nearly impossible to advance this far in the game when it was originally programmed. After a short time of celebration and the community's recognition of this kid's achievement achievement, taking his spot in gaming history as a god, Willis dedicated all of this to his dad who had died the month before. Then the boomers came to try and take it all away. As this story shot to the top of mainstream news, some people were less than impressed, such as Jane Secker, a news anchor for Sky News, who had only this to say. As a mother, I would just say step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. <laughs> First issue here is she's a reporter for a news organization, okay? You're not supposed to give your opinion if you're branding yourself as a news broadcaster. So anyway, in my opinion, this is obviously a very dated take to have, which is surprising because she's only 51. If I could be an armchair psychologist for a moment, I'd say I think that this came from not only the decline of traditional media, which she is heavily invested in, but also the lack of achievement she has earned in her own life, being that she is a product of nepotism, having a parent ties to the industry from her late mother's television and radio presenting career, Kathy Secker, yeah, I bet you didn't hear that anywhere else. Joe News has the number one research team. Like and subscribe. So yeah, this is just very silly. It isn't 1998 anymore. It has been proven that you have just as much, if not more of a chance to get opportunity from playing video games than you do from any other sport or traditional hobby. Even outside of money by itself, colleges give out scholarships for video games now. They have esports teams. Even me with my little channel, I have made far more money from playing video games on this channel than anyone I know who played sports in high school. But I don't even think this attitude comes from just outdated opinions. It also comes from jealousy. Traditional media is dying. I witnessed this personally when I recently went to a news station. I will not name which one, but I went there for work and the place was a mess. The building was impressive, but all the rooms were very outdated and general upkeep was extremely poor. I saw water bottles laying around, microphone cables laying in the middle of hallways, and even the place I was working in, which was a very fancy office that was regularly occupied, had so much junk everywhere, I had to personally move literal trash out of my way just to get my job done. Which is another fun thing I saw. I saw receipts at this news station that paid literal tens of thousands of dollars for what's described from what I snooped was just advertising contracts. It, it does not take that much to put on a new show. I'm doing one right now in 1080p with a zero dollar budget. Just it's another industry that th th there's, there's so much entitlement like they were here first so they should get special treatment. No, you, you're greedy and you'll make as much money as you used to so it's time to either downsize or just pack it up and, and tr try to find other way to reach out because it's just it's just ridiculous with these news stations over and over and over again traditional media over and over and over again attacking these youtubers these streamers and for, for nothing but when they actually do bad shit like you got aiden ross you got neon they don't cover that the actual bad people no they'll cover who's ever on top of the game like pewdiepie back in the day it just it's ridiculous and now we have noel with the weather it's snowing in other news, we have Logan Paul finally making everything right. So for those of you who don't know, Logan Paul has garnered the reputation of being a scam artist through cryptocurrency projects such as Dink Doink and a better known project known as CryptoZoo. Now it's pretty widely accepted that these were giant scam projects from the beginning. Uh, CoffeeZilla, a YouTuber, does a very good job going over all of these things in intricate detail to the point where Logan Paul had to apologize to CoffeeZilla for originally calling him out, saying that he was only doing this for the views, stating a few months back that he was going to pay back the victims of the failed crypto project CryptoZoo. And it was mostly quiet until recently, where on Twitter, 
Logan Paul had this to say. Today, I am incredibly happy to announce that I am delivering on my promise to buy back eggs and base animal crypto zoo NFTs for the original purchase price. This buyback program is being carried out at eggnftbuyback.com. Claims can be submitted through this site through February 8th. I approach the crypto zoo project like everything else I am passionate about with only the best possible intentions and success for everyone who shared our vision. I never made a single penny from the project. Period. In fact, the opposite is true because I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to make it happen with this buyback program. I am personally committing more than $2.3 million to buy back base eggs and base animals from every person who intended to play CryptoZoo like you. I was highly disappointed that the game was not delivered. As I said a year ago, CryptoZoo was derailed by bad actors. Bad actors who did steal money and who betrayed our team while intentionally sabotaging the game. This has now been confirmed by an extensive investigation that has involved a forensic analyst of blockchain activity and the review of thousands of communications. With this evidence in mind, today I have filed a lawsuit in federal court in Texas to hold these bad actors accountable. The 25 page lawsuit is public and can be found here. This lawsuit is not based just on snippets of conversations taken out of context. Well, that's, that's like, <laughs> he's taking a stab at CoffeeZilla there, which is really funny given everything we've seen leading up to this point. This lawsuit is the result of an exhaustive investigation that included the review of the entirety of the conversation and tracking nefarious trading activities related to the project, nefarious trading activities taken behind our backs without our knowledge, with an intention of defrauding us all. As far as the game itself, unfortunately it will not be released. I personally spent $400,000 to have it developed and after its completion in early 2023 and some further diligence unfortunately there are too many regulatory hurdles that would need to be cleared that i did not originally understand and would ultimately delay this buyback even further this buyback is a way for me to make whole those who intended to play crypto zoo the buyback is not intended to compensate those who gambled on the crypto zoo market and lost it is important to remember that the zoo token was created to support crypto zoo game and its players it was intended as an investment vehicle as outlined in the original white paper this solution has been anything but simple so i want to thank everyone for their patience and we figured out the logistics and making sure the first and to ever nft buyback is smooth in progress dude screw thanking them you should thank me for reading the whole thing holy shit logan my god of course anyone who takes an entire year to respond to these types of accusations and then delivers this lengthy 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 response could only be telling the truth and being 100 honest listen this guy is so obviously just such a piece of crap if you don't want to take my word for it i i encourage you to go back and watch the coffeezilla breakdown of everything he did with crypto zoo and i i'll leave that in a comment probably underneath this video go go watch that and um yeah and while you're down there leave a comment and go back up and leave a like and if you're new subscribe bye it's the news so basically every so often dwayne the rock johnson has a cheat day now the only thing bigger than dwayne the rock johnson's muscles is his ego so every time he has a cheat day he makes a giant big spectacle about it. it's like his birthday every time the man eats a cheeseburger